All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you all for um, spending some time tonight um, coming to learn more about the Counselor Education and Supervision PhD program at the University of Arkansas. Um, we uh, have about an hour and a half scheduled for us to talk about the program, introduce it, um, answer any questions you might have. Um, we don't have to use that whole time. Um, but we do have some time at the end for questions. Feel free as we move through to ask questions as you have those. Uh, you can unmute um, and ask any questions that you might have um, or hold them till the end. So I'm David Christian. I am um, an associate professor here in the Counselor Education um, and Supervision Program, and I'm also the PhD Program Coordinator. And so that's why I'm leading tonight's meeting. Um, and we're going to start off with CNED faculty introducing themselves. And CNED is Counselor Education and Supervision, just so for those who don't know. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Paul Blissard. A welcome to our uh, get together tonight. This is the first time I've done it this way. It's kind of neat in a way to get to see your faces before I read anything about you if you decide to apply. But uh, mm -hmm. just I'm, a, I'm clinical faculty here. I uh, taught for 20, 20 years plus at Missouri State University. I've been here about starting my ninth year. And uh, lots of things have changed in the counselor education business since I've been doing this for 30 years. But I do think right now is the best time that I can recall to be a counselor educator and, and to go after that degree. I think uh, there's a real good demand for counselor education right now. And, uh, and it's also so needed. And with all the uh, the things we have going on in our environment, that uh, training counselor is going to be very important, I think. And so, I would welcome you to uh, to ask any kind of questions tonight. Uh, you can see my uh, my own uh, bio up there, but uh, any questions, any of us would be glad to to answer them for you. And uh, and, and I hope that um, you kind of enjoy tonight, and 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 look forward to seeing you maybe in the future. So thanks for thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dr. Bizarre. So I'll go next. Um, as I said, I'm David Christian, an associate professor here in the Counselor Education and Supervision Program. Um, I did my graduate work at the University of North Texas down um, in Denton. Uh, I've worked in secondary and post-secondary education in Texas before coming to the University of Arkansas. Um, in 2015, so I'm going on my seventh year here. Um, I teach the doctoral level courses and I specialize in school counseling, adventure therapy, um, family interventions, and specifically interventions um, around Adlerian theory. Hi, right. hello. Welcome, everybody. I am Kristen Higgins and I'm an associate professor in counselor education and supervision. And currently just this August, um, got asked to serve as interim department head of our department, which is rehabilitation, human resources and counseling, which is soon to be a new department that is going to be named um, counseling leadership and research methods. So we're excited about that upcoming change. Um, as you can see, I am a long-term resident of this program in one way or another since 1999, getting both my master's and PhD um, at the program and have stuck around since. And I'm now in my 17th year as faculty for um, Counselor Ed. And I'm very excited to have you all here tonight and interested in our program and Look forward to and I'm open to any follow up emails or reaching out any way I can help you learn more about the program, please um, don't hesitate to reach out and after introductions I do have to kind of um, sneak off we've got family company in town tonight, but I did want to be able to come on and say hello and introduce myself. Dr Higgins can I have you do the next introduction because I think you know this faculty best. It's Dr. Yes. Cook. Okay, so Dr. Lynn Cook um, is a full professor in the Counselor Education and Supervision Program. Um, Dr. Cook's background is in rehabilitation counseling. Um, Dr. Cook will actually be retiring this December, 
So um, you will not get to have the opportunity should you join us um, to have Dr. Cook, but she has been um, a, a large part of uh, teaching rehab classes involved in rehabilitation grants, um, has, I think, co-authored more than 100 peer-reviewed articles, so pretty prolific in research in her field. Thanks. Dr. Freeman. Welcome, everyone. Um, glad to have you, especially, um, I don't know what time zone you all are in, but it's evening here. It's bound to be evening-ish where you're at, too. So thanks for joining us um, at this time and your interest in our program. Um, I My research areas are in school counseling, um, expressive slash creative arts, and play therapy and social emotional learning. And I'm the director of the Office of Play Therapy Research and Training. Um, and you'll learn more about that tonight. You'll see our lab and our, we have um, Tuesday the art playrooms. We have a group room that also has two sand trays and sand tray figures um, for sand tray therapy. And um, as, as a part of our program, you can obtain your registered play therapist certification. If that's something that you're interested in, you can complete all the coursework. And many of our students have also completed the supervision component of it so that um, when they graduated, they were ready to send in for their RPT. So if that's something you're interested in, I'm glad to talk with you more about that. Thanks, Dr. Kramen. Dr. Popejoy? Hey, everybody. Welcome. Um, I'm Dr. Popejoy. I am an associate professor here in the program. I'm also currently the um, interim program coordinator um, and the clinical coordinator for the program. Um, I got my master's from Texas State University um, in 2011 and my PhD from UTSA in San Antonio in 2015. Um, let's see what else. Most of my research um, focuses somewhere around um, trauma and women. Um, previously has really focused on military and military families, um, working with um, combat trauma, um, but more recently has kind of veered into um, trauma around women and, and women's issues in general, whatever those might be. Um, and let's see, most of my research also tends to be qualitative um, for whatever reason. Those are the, the questions I tend to ask. And when I don't ask qualitative questions, I ask Dr. Christian how to do it um, <laughs> or somebody else in ESRM um, because quantitative is not um, my forte. It is uh, doable, but someone else can usually do it faster and make more sense of it. Uh, and I know that's something that a lot of folks uh, have concerns about when coming into a PhD program. And so I think it's always good to know that uh, there are various different ways of doing research. Um, both are, are all are very important, um, but don't let stats and things like that scare you. So welcome. Thanks, Dr. Popejoy. And Dr. Williams. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Brent Williams. Uh, as of last July, I have been here at the uh, program for 20 years. As you can see from the bio, I did my master's at uh, University of Texas Southwest Medical School in, in Dallas, did my doctoral work at Urbana-Champaign in Illinois. Uh, like Dr. Cook, I'm one of the two rehabilitation counseling faculty. Uh, most of my research has been involved uh, with inclusion, mostly employment, uh, getting folks with disabilities uh, involved in employment, independent living as they transition from high school to work. I do a lot of externally funded projects, work with a lot of state and federal agencies on evaluating systems, uh, agencies and not-for-profits on how they provide services to folks with disabilities. And you know, just to piggyback off what uh, Dr. Bilar said, it's it's true. If there was ever a time, if your interest is is in in part with the larger field of disability and with the inclusion of people with disabilities, I would would probably be your the, the guy to speak to. And with that said, just welcome to uh, tonight's program. 
Thank you, Dr. Williams. And now we're gonna have our current um, Counselor Education and Supervision Program graduate assistants introduce themselves. I'll go first. My name is Nick Belligard. Um, I'm a first year doc student about to wrap up my first year um, and co-director of the Adventure Therapy Lab. So I've been uh, getting trained in adventure therapy and uh, running groups on that. And we're doing projects in the community. I've also been working on um, doing research as well on mostly on adventure therapy, some some on other things and getting getting uh, engaged in the class schedule as well. Um, so that's been a lot of fun getting to know my PhD peers and uh, going deeper with a lot of the counseling learning in terms of theory and all that good stuff. So, Thanks, Nick. Rachel? Hi, I'm Rachel Crawford. I am finishing my third year in the program. I am a doctoral candidate now. Um, so I um, came to the program with a background in school counseling, and I have really enjoyed getting to try out all the different things that we didn't have in my master's program. So um, I've enjoyed adventure therapy and play therapy, learning about vocational rehabilitation, um, all of the things that I, I didn't have any exposure to before I came here. Um, and I also really have enjoyed getting to know my classmates and their various experiences and, and backgrounds. It, it's been a good experience for me. Thanks, Rachel. Mary? Let me unmute first. Uh, hi, my name is Mary Keith. I'm starting my fourth year in the doctoral program. And uh, as several have said before me, um, have really enjoyed getting to uh, expand my knowledge base and explore uh, what else is out there um, and working directly with people and learning how to uh, build those collaborative partnerships uh, to advance my interests. Um, I primarily came from a transition background, uh, transition services and uh, working uh, or want to work with uh, people with disability, work with individuals with disabilities in some capacity in advocacy or leadership. So um, thanks for joining us and uh, glad to see you here. Thanks, Mary. Kate? Hey, everybody. It's good to see you, meet you. Uh, I'm glad you're here. And I'm Kate. I'm in my second year of the doc program and still kind of learning, absorbing a lot of things all the time, but um, pursued this program because I'm interested in creative alternatives to therapy. Um, so that includes specifically adventure therapy. I'm interested in women in adventure therapy very specifically um, and using sand tray. I'm really passionate about that um, and metaphor. And I've really enjoyed this program of letting me teach a lot more. And that's been so fun in supervising. And so um, We'll get lots of opportunities to co-teach and to teach and be challenged. And um, I really hope that this is kind of a, an avenue that you pursue because it's been great for me. So thanks. Thanks, Kate. Hilda? Hi, I'm Hilda. And um, I've enjoyed being in this program because um, it has provided me, provided me with all the skills that I think I needed. <laughs> to be able to work as a, an advanced clinician, um, researcher, uh, supervisor, and um, counselor educator as well. I have a background in teaching. I was teaching for a very, very long time before I got to the program, um, but it was in a different part of the world. So the system was different. And um, what I needed to be able to function um, effectively in this new system, learn the nuances of um, higher ed, um, I'm getting it for this program. And um, as you can tell, of course, with my accent, I'm from another part of the world. So um, I add some diversity to 
my um, colleagues here, grad assistant colleagues, and um, the program is doing a very good job at making sure that they cater to the needs of um, diverse students because we have other international students as well. And um, I have really honed in some of the skills I came into the program with and think I am um, getting the support I need from faculty to be able to be effective um, when I am when I graduate from the program. Thanks, Hilda. Um, I think I just saw Lynn Lay jump on. And if it's not putting you on the spot too much, I'd like you to introduce yourself. Lynn is a teaching graduate assistant in our program. Yes, yes. Sorry about that. Sorry, I'm like, can y'all hear me? My service is going in and yeah. out. Um, I'm Lynn Lay, like Dr. Kitchen said, a teaching graduate, assi uh, graduate assistant. Let's see, I am um, third year, trying to wrap up and and get out of here soon. Um, I uh, I work as a licensed professional counselor um, for ESA counseling. Right now, um, like Kilda was saying, I too add some diversity to the program. Um, and yeah, that's me. I know, did I miss something else? Sorry, I jumped on a little late. <laughs> no, and that, that's good. And, and mother. Um, yeah, oh yeah, y'all probably hear my kids now. Um, <laughs> Tristan's talking, but yeah, I have two littles. Uh, six-year-old and a six-month-old. So. Thanks, Lynn. Lynn is also um, an MBCC, which is the National Board Certified Counselors, I believe is what that stands for, but an MBCC Minority Fellow. So she, it's something that she was nominated for and accepted into. Um, so if you have questions about that towards the end, hopefully um, we'll be able to answer some of those. Yes, and that that sorry that um it's open right now for people that want to apply. So um, and don't think um, I guess if you may not be from a marginalized group, don't think that you can't apply. It's about the population that you work with, and a lot of us um, work with different marginalized communities. So it you know it doesn't just have to be you know, skin color. So if you're considering that, um, by all means, go for it and apply and I can help with anything if y'all are interested in it. Thanks, Lynn. So now we're going to transition and talk a little bit about our program. Um, we thought we would start off by sharing our vision, mission, and then learning objectives. Hopefully you can see um, what we stand for, um, what your time in the program would be centered around, um, so our program vision is to improve the capacity of the counseling profession to maximize effective service delivery through a nationally competitive learning centered program of excellence serving Arkansas, the nation and the world. And that's something that I think we really do um, uh, emphasize. Did you heard um, Hilda share about work with international students? Um, we have study abroad programs that students participate in. Um, we work with different uh, organizations on campus, um, international organizations. On Saturday, we're going to do a hike uh, with about 32 international students from the University of Arkansas through Chi Sigma Iota, which is our honor society and the Adventure Therapy Lab. Um, and we're very active in Arkansas. Our new interim dean has a program and it's called We Care. It's an acronym. Um, and it's about um, how can the University of Arkansas serve the state, um, remembering that we are the University of Arkansas. And so we're, we're working to establish our presence, not just here, our continued presence here in Northwest Arkansas, but working on collaborations outside of this corner of the state across. So it's a really exciting time um, with We Care and that vision. Um, and then the nation, you'll see we um, have different doc students from different parts of the United States, but then our doc doctoral students graduate and go to different parts of the United States. Um, I know we have um, doctoral students on faculty in places like Alaska, Oklahoma, um, Colorado, Florida, Alabama, um, Wisconsin, I believe, Ohio, 
What am What am I missing? Indiana, Rhode Island. Am I missing Kentucky. any? Kentucky. Kentucky. Oh yeah, Kentucky. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So did you, um, did you say Florida? Yep, I got Florida. Yeah, we have a few <laughs> faculty in Florida. So, um, uh, Mississippi, also Mississippi. Um. So, uh, train here, and then we want to send you out to different parts of the state, country, and world. Our program mission, the Counselor Education and Supervision Program advances clinical mental health, rehabilitation, and school counseling by providing high-quality teaching and training to emerging counselors and counselor educators, conducting rigorous research with real-world implications, and serving professional and community organizations. The program is committed to improving diverse, diversity and inclusion within the counseling profession by recruiting students from a variety of backgrounds, supporting their professional and personal growth, preparing them to work with individuals with marginalized identities, and working to end oppression within the field and larger society. Collectively, collectively these efforts improve mental health, wellness, educational, and career outcomes in Arkansas and beyond. And so hopefully that gives you an idea, one, that our program has three specialty areas, um, clinical mental health, health counseling, rehabilitation counseling, and school counseling. And that's mainly for our uh, master students. So they come in and they complete a specialty, which all of you are probably familiar with. But at the U, U of A, we have three of those. And so as a doctoral student, you'll get the opportunity to take classes in those. If you want to diversify your knowledge and expertise, um, you also have opportunities to help teach different types of classes. Um, and then we, we are an R1 institution. So that means that we have a strong emphasis on research and scholarship. And I think everyone would agree that our goal is to do really good, qual high quality research. And most importantly, that we have real world implications. So counseling is an applied field. We're training our master students to go out and serve clients. Our end goal and our emphasis is always client well-being and client health. Um, and so our research focuses around that as well. How can we improve practices that help clients? Um, and then we also emphasize service in different professional communities, uh, professional and community organizations. And that's what's so great about being in Northwest Arkansas um, and in, in Arkansas in general and being at the University of Arkansas. Um, you get lots of opportunities to serve in the community through whether it's presentations, volunteering on boards, helping out. Um, we have groups that are going on at the Yvonne, Yvonne Richardson Center. We're looking to do some collaboration um, with Mount Sequoia, the camp at Mount Sequoia this summer. And so lots of different things, lots of different opportunities for service. Um, and then we've also um, really stressed and are pushing, as, um, as Hilda talked about and as Lynn talked about, just um, improving diversity and inclusion um, within the counseling profession. Um, and that starts here in our program. And so we've had some um, we've had um, some events focused around DEI, but we've really made a push to be more inclusive um, and bring uh, concepts, multicultural concepts, diversity issues into the classroom um, and help prepare our students to, again, work with the diverse clientele. Um, here in Arkansas and across the, the country and world. So, um, yeah, that's the program mission. Here's our philosophy statement. The guiding philosophy, goals, policies, and practices of the counselor education program are shaped by its central commitment to provide learning experiences, allowing each graduate to become a fully functioning, helping professional in an evolving and diverse world. And so. Our master's program is 60 credit hours, so we train master's students um, to go out and be professionals. Um, our doctoral program is 80 credit hours, and so we're wanting to, um, and even in, in 60 hours and even in 80 hours, we know there are things that we can't necessarily teach. We can't teach everything, but what we want to do is create um, lifelong learners that can go out that are highly skilled, um, and if they don't, if you don't have the specific skill you need, you know how to get that skill or find it. And inherent in the concept of a fully functioning individual is the conceptual framework that emotional and intellectual growth and the worth of each person are emphasized in addition to academic and professional activities. And so we do have um, a very learner-centered program. 
whether it's at the doctoral program, also at the master's program. Um, because we do have a doctoral program and because we are an R1, faculty spend a lot of time doing research and working with doctoral students. And so oftentimes the front line um, for us uh, with our master's students are our doctoral students. And so you'll get a lot of experience supervising. You'll get experience teaching and co-teaching. Um, and uh, yeah. Our statement of beliefs. In order to graduate high quality and effective counselors, counselor educators and supervisors, we believe it's important to ensure graduates can provide culturally responsive, ethical and effective counseling services from a relevant theoretical perspective. Uh, acknowledge the importance of gatekeeping through supervision and ensure graduates can provide ethical and culturally responsive supervision. Train graduates in pedagogical practices that are both developmentally appropriate and culturally responsive. Prepare graduates to advance the field of counseling through dynamic qualitative and quantitative research. Graduate the next generation of counseling leaders and advocates who are committed to excellence and practice and equity, diversity, inclusion, and anti-racism. And so what you what you might notice or may not notice about these five points is within counselor education, there are really five domains that we operate in. Uh, the first one. Uh, talks about counseling services and theory. And so we're clinicians, counselor educators are clinicians. And really we're clinicians first, since we go through a master's program to be clinicians. Um, and the second bullet point is about supervision. And so that's another realm that we operate in. We supervise, um, we supervise master's students, we supervise uh, PhD students. Many of us on faculty are LPC supervisors, so we supervise people in the field. And so as a counselor educator, you will be um, expected to do um, quite a bit of supervision um, and within that gatekeeping. That third bullet point, um, pedagogical practices. So uh, those that uh, when if you decide to do the program and take either my foundations class or teaching class, um, you'll learn a new term, andragogy or andragogical. And so Pedagogical really speaks to teaching, teaching children at the college level. We teach adults, which would be like andragogy, um, but it's all about teaching. The third realm that we operate within is we're teachers. So we're counselor, educators, and supervisors. So we teach. And so you'll get training in teaching. You'll get opportunities to teach. We have undergrad undergraduate classes that our doctoral students teach, as well as co-teaching and co-instruction in, um, in master's level classes. And then some of our advanced um, doctoral students will teach like as adjunct for us. They'll actually be the instructor of record for the master's classes. That fourth bullet point, pair graduates to advance the field of counseling through research. And so the fourth realm in which we operate as counselor educators and supervisors is research. Um, and as I mentioned at the University of Arkansas being in R1, we engage in a lot of research. And so you should have lots of opportunities to write, to present, um, and to seek out publication opportunities. And the fifth one um, is leadership. So count as a counselor educator, you um, are in a prime position to be a leader um, for our field, for your students. Um, you're in a prime position to be an advocate, an advocate for the field, for students, but um, an advocate for um, societal change to make the world a better place. Um, and so those are the five realms within which that we operate. Uh, clinical work, supervision, teaching, research, and leadership and advocacy. And so um, if you decide to come uh, to pursue a PhD in counselor education, those would be the five domains that you would be trained in. Here's some information about program objectives. I'm not gonna go through each of these. Um, these are on our website and we'll also make sure that this PowerPoint's on the website. You can look through it if you want to. One thing I do wanna point out is you'll see um, these right in here, 6.b.1, doctoral counseling KPI. So those are KCREP standards and KCREP, I don't remember what the acronym stands for, but it's the um, nationally recognized accrediting body for counselor education programs. It's very important that you do, um, if you want to do a PhD program in counselor education supervision, that you do it at a KCREP accredited program. Um, KCREP accredited programs are now only allowed um, to, well, they can, this is complicated. Anyways, they um, mainly hire 
PhD um, graduates from KCREP accredited programs. So we are KCREP accredited, um, it requires quite a bit of work on behalf of faculty, but it makes sure that we're meeting certain standards, um, standards that show that we have a certain quality of product and a quality of student who's graduating from our program. So now we wanted to introduce you to some of our alumni briefly. Um, where are they now? So uh, this is Timothy Schoonover, TJ Schoonover. He was a graduate assistant in the PhD program. He um, graduated in 2021, and he uh, was awarded recently by the Association of Humanistic Counseling um, uh, the Outstanding Humanistic Dissertation Award. And he is now faculty at Northern Illinois University. And I don't know. Oh, yeah, Dr. Perryman's still on here. Dr. Perryman, would you like to share anything about the award and the dissertation? Um, sure. TJ did a single case design at Hope Academy, which is the only school of its kind in Arkansas and one of only a few in the nation. It's um, a charter school for children who've experienced trauma. And so he did a single case design using uh, child-centered play therapy and found it to be um, effective when working with children who have um, numerous ACE scores. Um, and we were excited that he won the Humanistic Award because it doesn't usually go to play therapy people. It usually goes to those um, studying adults. So it was a, a big honor and we're really proud of him. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Perryman. This next one you probably could speak to as well. Sorry, I don't see the PowerPoint. What do we got? Oh, it, uh, so this is Dr. Margaret Hinman, who graduated in 2021, 2022, and received um, an award from the Association for Play Therapy, their 2022 Student Research Award. Yeah, so um, Margaret is the first one from the University of Arkansas to win the Association for Play Therapy Student Research Award. So we're really excited about that as well. Her study actually was about promoting play therapy and educating um, adults because those are the ones who seek play therapy for children. Um, and so she did a study where she surveyed people all around the country about their play therapy knowledge. And if you're familiar with um, Here's Andrew, the video where Andrew talks about play therapy, it's in Spanish, French, and um, English. And it's just a short, cute video on the Association for Play Therapy website, but she used it as a way to educate um, those who didn't know about play therapy and surveyed them before and after. And one of the really cool things about that is the National um, Assist, well, the International Association for Play Therapy is now using that study to model um, how they want to promote play therapy um, better. So good stuff happening from their research. Thanks, Dr. Freeman. So here are just a few samples of research articles that were recently published. Um, you'll see faculty names on there. You'll also see current student names um, and previous student names. So Dr. McCarty, Danny McCarty is at South Alabama, University of South Alabama as an assistant professor. Dr. Kean Brown, who's on that first article, he is at the University of Oklahoma as an assistant professor. And this second article, and that, that article is on experiential education um, and how um, a certain model could be used online um, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so, we'll, yeah, we'll, okay. The next one you'll see is an article by Dr. Perryman and a current doctoral student, Rachel Crawford. Um, and also that was written with one of our, our past dean. And so you can see there's collaboration with faculty all the way up into the dean's office. Um, I don't know if Rachel or Christy would like to share a bit about that article. Rachel, you jump in this time. Um, it just it focuses on like the dangers basically of social media um, and the effects that it has um, in transitional age youth. So like teenagers um, and it looks at lots of different research um, kind of in that area and the and the negative effects that social media tends to have. So, And our dean had written a book on the topic and done a TED talk on the topic, been on like the Today Show because of it. 
And it was an invited article and we were honored that he asked us to help with it. Yeah. Uh, the next article, um, Dr. Julia Conroy was a student at the time that this article was put together. She's since graduated and is now alum and it was Dr. Perryman. Dr. Perryman, would you like to talk a little bit about that article? Sure. Um, so this is um, a really cool article because it's, it's the first research of its kind. Um, Julia, um, we found other people on campus to help educate her in order to be able to do the study because what we offer alone wasn't enough. She was studying the physiological impact of um, emotionally focused therapy with couples. So we found folks from exercise science who understood the physiological data. We wrote a grant um, to get these $3,000 wristbands. So um, each of the couple wore the wristbands and she was measuring synchrony, essentially attunement. Um, and because EFT therapy is very scripted in terms of when this happens, you do this. Um, our assumption was we would be able to see exactly when synchrony happened. And the cool thing was we, we were able to see when it happened. Um, and it was when they were discussing um, attachment injuries or having emotional conversation rather than cognitive conversation. So another study has, um, has shown that to date and it was just published in the, the best journal in our field. So, um, and it had a, a lot of great faculty input helping with it from across campus, so. Thanks Dr. Kramen. Uh, the next article, Using Adventure Therapy to Improve Self-Efficacy of Middle School Students. So this was some action research that we did um, in New Hampshire through a connection we had. So um, Brian Miller, the, final, the last author on that article, was actually a school counselor who collaborated with us on multiple projects. Um, you'll see um, Dr. Schoonover is on that article as well. He was a student at the time of that, um, and we wrote that now alum. Dr. Brown is also on that, who is now at the University of Oklahoma. And then the last article on here, you'll see um, Dr. Evan Smarinski is faculty at Johnson and Wells now up at um, in Rhode Island. Um, this is an, uh, and Dr. Brown and myself are on this one as well, examining the effects of mindfulness-based intervention using a neurofeedback device and adolescent introspection. Um, and so this, we collected data using the Muse headband. Um, it, um, I'm not, I don't really understand. I know what we did. Kean Brown, Dr. Brown is a board certified neurofeedback therapist. So he used, got all the data and ran it. But we basically wanted to know the self-report of being calm uh, match with what the headband was reading. So basically a self-report of adolescents when they're doing mindfulness. Does the brain, is the brain doing what they think it's doing? based on what we know about neuro neuroscience. Um, and we found that it seems like they were pretty accurate. Um, so that's another one. Again, students on those articles with faculty, with our dean. So lots of opportunities to produce research. This is just a few examples. There's a lot more going on. Um, and what's also great is like this, the, the Smirinsky article, that was an idea that he had with some research we were already doing. So that was student initiated. Um, Dr. Conroy's, that was student-initiated, student um, and so lots of opportunities for our doctoral students to lead in research. Okay, so a little bit about um, our facilities where research can happen, also where you might get some practical experience. We have two fully equipped play therapy rooms. We have two individual or couples counseling rooms. We have a group therapy room that has two large sand trays, we have 10 smaller sand trays and a complete set of figurines that are used in research for dissertations and other projects. Um, and then all of those rooms are equipped with recording technology that utilizes cloud storage. So you can go back and transcribe things and code them and all of, all of that stuff related to qualitative research. And just to bring those to life a little bit, there are some pictures of our room. So um, this picture top left, is our group room. You can see the figurines and the um, sand tray. Uh, classes also occur in this room. It's kind of comfy, smaller doctoral level classes um, in different meetings. This middle picture here is one of our adult rooms. So this is um, where also where doctoral students do most of their doc supervision. And that's where they provide supervision to master students um, that are doing internship and practicums. 
Um, there's recording equipment in there, but there's also um, a computer where students can show video and give feedback. And then up here, this fun looking room um, is our play therapy room. One of them, we have two play therapy rooms. Um, you can see sand the sandbox is over here. We got this um, painting easel and then there's toys back in here you can't see, but this is a Landreth approved um, play therapy room. And we have two of those. Also, you can record in those. Um, I think at least one of our GAs is currently seeing kiddos and recording and using that. Maybe multiple? Um, just one of them right now. Just one right now? Okay. Mm -hmm. so that's definitely an opportunity if you would like that. All right. And now we're going to shift and talk a little bit about degree requirements. And so what courses will you be expected to take? And this will give you a little bit, idea, a little bit of an idea about what you'd be studying, what you'd be learning. Um, so uh, on the left side of the screen, you'll see all the CNED numbers, and that's counselor education and supervision. The hours required are three hour classes, usually meet once a week for about three hours, and then the name of the class. And so all doctoral students are required to do advanced counseling theory and methods, an advanced group theory and methods class, Supervision of counselors, where you'll learn about how to supervise different models and theories, and you'll get to practice um, by seeing our master's students. And then after that, you'll continue to help us supervise our master's students. There's a Foundations of Counselor Education and Supervision program, which is just basically an intro. Um, that class is going on right now, so I think there's nine um, doctoral students in that class currently. And really what we do is just go over those five areas that I talked about. We just spend the whole semester talking about what are those five areas? What does that look like? What areas do you want to grow in? We talk about the different opportunities as far as counselor education and supervision, as far as different universities or different settings that you could work or practice in. Um, CNED 6143, Teaching Counselor Education, is a new class. Um, and we developed this class so that um, students have a full semester to learn pedagogy, andragogy, get to practice teaching our undergrad classes, get to write a philosophy of teaching, um, and, this, and determine what type of teacher do you want to be, learn about grading, syllabus creation, all those fun types of things. CNED 6243 is disability policy in the U.S. Um, about, wow, five years ago now, I believe, it was 2017, the rehabilitation um, accrediting body and KCREP merged. And so we used to have two programs, a rehabilitation program at the University of Arkansas and a counseling program, and we merged our programs. Um, and as, as programs did that across the country, there is this major need for faculty coming out of counselor education and supervision programs with an understanding of disability policy and with an understanding of voc uh, vocational rehabilitation. So we added that class and made it required. Also, as a teacher, as an instructor, you, we want our students to understand disability policy, um, accessibility, accommodations in the classroom. Uh, cultural Foundations in Counseling is a class that's currently going on. It's an advanced level um, cultural diversity or multicultural counseling course. Um, advanced Counseling Practicum is a three-hour class where you have to get 100 hours, 40 direct client contacts, 60 indirect. Probably sounds familiar from your master's program. KCREP does require that that counseling, advanced counseling practicum is clinical experience. And so you have to work at some sort of counseling setting. Um, and we often encourage students to um, get experience that you don't, you haven't had before. So that could be with a different clientele, a different age group, just some, some group that you um, can competently work with, but that you haven't worked with in the past. Um, advanced clinical internship is something new that we're doing. It's a, you take two classes on it and it's advanced clinical work. And so um, you would sign up in those classes and you would continue to get clinical experience at some place. And this is just to help, A, ensure that you are a good counselor, that you have good clinical skills. And B, we also want all of our students to be working towards licensure. And so this is just also a way that you can continue to gather those hours. Um, and there's, 
that gets a little complicated with courses and, and things like that, which we won't get into tonight. But that, again, is just to help get those skills going um, or sharpen those skills even more and then help work towards licensure. Um, then there are 11 hours of internships, and these are kind of up to the student and their advisory committee. Um, you have to do research, instructorship, and supervision. And so you'd enroll in a class and maybe work on a research project for that semester with the faculty, or you might co-instruct a class with faculty, or you might do supervision of doctoral students. And so those work out, you, you work them out with your advisor, but you get um, 11 hours, 11 credit hours. And then finally, you do 18 credits of dissertation. Um, and those are broken up throughout um, uh, over so many semesters, it's up to you and your advisor how you want to do that for a total of 59 hours of like straight counselor education courses. On top of those 59 hours, you will take at least two courses that count as electives from any of these classes or electives approved by the committee, by your committee. And so you can see we have some counselor education courses. Um, but we also have HIED and those that stands for higher education and those um, those classes really are about teaching and being a professor. And so we have many students who come in that maybe have doctoral students come in who have like really good experience. Maybe they're even supervisors at this point, but they've never taught. They're not trained teachers. And so they'll focus their electives around those classes. Again, that's something that you would um, decide with your advising committee. And then finally, there are 15 hours of research required. Um, don't panic about those. You can see that um, one is a CNED class, Counselor Education and Supervision Program class, Advanced Research and Counseling. This we encourage students to take towards the end of their program, and it's where you start to write your dissertation. And then we have ESRM courses, which is Educational Statistics and Research Methods. Um, and there's four classes that you take in, in ESRM. Three of them are prescriptive, so you have to take the 6403, 6413, and 6533, and then you get an elective. Um, typically, if a student is wanting to do qualitative research for their dissertation and they're focusing on qualitative research, they would do like advanced qual for their elective. If you're wanting to do quantitative, you might do some sort of an advanced quantitative course like multiple regression, um, uh, multivariate analysis, something like that. One thing to note is that there is a prereq to start taking ESRM classes, and that is Introduction to Educational Research. So most of you have probably had a class like that in your master's program. Um, if you haven't, then that'd be a course that you would have to take prior to taking your um, research courses. All right, um, so now let's talk a little bit about financial aid opportunities. This PowerPoint again will be available online, so you can go in and click these links, um, but we did want to talk about a few different opportunities. One, we have graduate assistants all over campus that are always looking for students, and so many of our doc students get graduate assistants. We have six lines that are de devoted specifically to the counselor education program. Um, when a student graduates, those open up, and so sometimes there are opportunities um, to be selected for one of those positions. But we also have students, um, doctoral students who have worked across campus, like in um, student services, code of conduct, um, the wellness center, uh, counseling and psychological services. So there's lots of different GAs across campus that you can apply for. Graduate assistantships typically come with tuition discounts and waivers. Um, in addition to those graduate assistantships, there are a few different fellowships that you could be nominated for depending on your GRE scores. There's some information there, and if you, if you um, have questions about that, we can talk more specifically about it. With those fellowships, the two fellowships that I'm thinking of, um, uh, the DA, DAF and DDF, they come with the graduate assistantship. So you find a graduate assistantship and then you get nominated and they're additional, an additional stipend on top of what you would get from your graduate assistantship. So graduate assistant, gradu, graduate assistantship um, gets you a tuition waiver and then a stipend. 
the fellowship would add an additional stipend on top of that. Um, we also have fellowships, um, which would be listed under this bullet point. We have a fellowship called the Benjamin Lever Fellowship, and it's specifically for um, uh, racial and ethnic minority students. And so um, it is a full tuition waiver. Um, it doesn't come with a graduate assistantship, but you can work off campus with that one. So you could work at a counseling center and then have all of your tuition um, covered through the Benjamin Lever Fellowship. And so if that's something that you think you might qualify for, you qualify for, you're interested in, um, CNED faculty could help you with that. Of course, we have um, the FAFSA. So depending on your eligibility, you can fill that out and look for financial aid for that. Um, here is the link for the uh, Office of Financial Aid on campus. You can go online or you can visit them. There's their online link. Um, there's a directory here link for fellowships and scholarships that you can go and look through. Um, if you find one you're interested in, you have questions about, you can reach out to um, the Office of Awards. You could also reach out to a counseling faculty and we'll do our best to help you out with that. Um, and then there's some um, external funding resources as well. Um, and here's a link to those for you to look through. All right, hopefully you love this information. You see what cool faculty we are and you're ready to apply. So if that's the case, the deadline for fall admission is January 15th. Um, and so we do we do interviews in the spring for admission in the fall. Uh, so January 15th is the deadline. Application materials would include an autobiographical sketch. And there's an outline um, on our website, on the Counselor Education and Supervision website. You can go to the doctoral uh, PhD program web page. And then it says like admission criteria, I think is what it says. And all this information is on there. So you write up an autobiographical sketch, then you provide a recent within six months of the application deadline video recording of a counseling session should be approximately 30 minutes that showcase showcases your counseling skills and your use of a theoretical orientation. Your videos are going to be uploaded to a folder, a secure folder that will be provided by um, our program, and then you um, will review that with faculty if you're invited for an interview. Now, something to really emphasize here is that to be considered for an on-campus interview, you have to have that uploaded. So your application is not considered complete unless you have uploaded that video. There's a few ways that you can do that. One, you can create a role play video with a volunteer client, a friend, family member, whatever it might be. You can video record a real counseling session with an actual client. If you do that, you have to have a, um, permission um, and upload that permission with the video. If you need a form, I believe we have a form that we can provide you. Or if your um, current site or employer has a form for video, and you could use that. Um, and then finally, our program can arrange a mock session with a volunteer on campus in one of those counseling rooms that you saw. So if you need that, you can contact me. Um, and I can help arrange that. And we've had a few students do that. We also now have an online clinic, which we didn't mention, I'm just thinking of, um, and we could set you up through online to do a session. Um, but if you would rather do a session in person and need some help with that, we can help you help you arrange that. Also, um, in addition to the autobiographical sketch and the video, you'll need your official GRE scores. Um, and then I don't I don't believe there's a cutoff. They were waived during COVID, but I think they're now required, but there's no cutoff. Um, so if you have questions about what your score needs to be or what a higher score or lower score might look like or impact your um, ability to get certain fellowships, um, feel free to ask us about that. You'll need to do letters of recommendation. The online graduate school application is where you'll upload those. And then, um, once all of those are on, we review the, those as faculty and we determine who we want to bring to on, to an on-campus interview, which is usually half a day to a full day. If you want to complete the application, here is the link that you can type in. Or again, this PowerPoint will be on our website and you can click on that and it takes you to that graduate school in international education.